Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! with an examination of what British politics, or at least what passes for political journalism in this country, has become in recent years. You, you may not know, but the, the Mail and the Telegraph today carry stories uh, alleging that Jeremy Corbyn is set to lift restrictions on immigration. Restrictions which, of course, you'll remember, both newspapers, especially the Mail, have spent years furiously insisting don't exist. How can you lift immigration restrictions if we've got uncontrolled immigration? Anybody? Bueller? Anybody? Seriously, if, if it's uncontrolled mass immigration that's brought this country to its knees, how can Jeremy Corbyn be planning to lift restrictions? But, hey, details, details. There are restrictions, everybody with a brain knows that, but um, when we leave the European Union, they'll have to make some sort of uh, provision to ensure that low-skilled workers can still come here. So, back in August of last year, Sir David Metcalf of the Migration Advisory Committee, a man who can be, in fact, should be realistically described as the government's chief immigration advisor, he said it would be pretty straightforward to run a permit scheme similar to a previous model used for seasonal farm workers. Telegraph printed the story, Daily Mail picked it up, everybody forgot about it almost immediately because it's so obviously true. Of course they're going to need some sort of scheme in place to make sure that the industries that rely on unskilled migrant labour don't collapse overnight the minute we leave Brexit. What happens when one has to presume that Conservative HQ is getting a little bit spooked by this continuing shift in the polls. They phone up their mates in the media and they say, look, we found this document. It's not actually in the manifesto. Uh, it's an internal policy document. It doesn't really mean much, but it contains exactly the same suggestion that the head of the Migration Advisory Committee made last year. And that the, the, even the bloke at the mail would go, well, why is, why is that a story? Well, yeah, but you don't, you don't tell your readers or your viewers or your listeners that it's exactly the same as what the government's chief migration advisor said we were going to have to do last year. Come on. This is electioneering 101. You don't treat the electorate, you don't treat the voters like they've got brains and eyes and ears. Treat them like they are just blind bigots. That's what you do. So the story, the exact same policy suggestion that the government's had immigration advisor suggested we should enact last year when it's been put through the mangle of the Daily Mail. Paul Dacre's worldview becomes Labour's plan to open doors to Britain even wider. These are the doors that you'll remember he spent the last 10 years telling us couldn't be any wider because we have open borders and we have uncontrolled mass immigration and anyone can come and go as they please but apparently it is now possible for Jeremy Corbyn to lift all of the restrictions that we have been told for over a decade never existed at all. Are you still with me at the back. Six minutes after ten is the time. So why would you do this? Answer, because if you get the word immigration into the story and Jeremy Corbyn and even wider, everyone will react in the predictable and furious way by going, oh, do down with him and his awful open door, actually even opener than it was before door policy, because it can't have been an open door policy, can it, if they're now going to make the door even opener. They haven't even got enough respect for their readers to pretend that that's not what they're doing. So he's going to open doors to Britain even wider. It's like that old joke about a, a door being ajar, isn't it? A door is either open or it's not. <laughs> but that's not good enough if they've spent years telling you that the doors are <laughs> wide open. What are they going to tell you today? The doors are even opener. The doors are even opener. What do we want? Less open doors that are still open. Cl what? <sighs> and we swallow it. We swallow it. We continue to swallow it. We continue to swallow this spoon-fed silliness. I don't know why. I'm not going to stop wondering why. I'm not going to stop asking why. So, the policy that was suggested last year by Sir David Metcalf of the Migration Advisory Committee as pretty much inevitable um, and drawing parallels with the agricultural scheme that we're already aware of is, to my inexpert eye, precisely the same as the story that the Mail and the Telegraph have been instructed today to use to make you scared. And it's worked, hasn't it? You're scared. Oh, down with Jeremy Corbyn and his opener door than before policy, even though the door wasn't supposed to be any opener at all. I, I don't know where it stops eight minutes after ten is the time. You look at what's happened in America and you think it really doesn't stop. You could end up with, with, a, with a, a kleptocrat, with a gangster 
running the country and you'd still have your friends in the right-wing media telling you that everything's fine. What's wrong with, with what's wrong with the president's son-in-law trying to open up a secret phone line direct to the Kremlin that cuts out all the security services and diplomatic conventions and constitutional observations? Hey, hey, what's not to like? It's absolutely fine. If, uh, if, if, if a man whose business interests apparently rely upon Russian investment is put in a position where he might be able to lift sanctions on Russian investment in America and therefore secure loans and financial support running into the billions of dollars. What's not to like? When Angela Merkel suggests that the post-war Western world order that has delivered over seven decades of unprecedented European peace is under threat from having an absolute clown in charge of the biggest superpower on the planet. Hey, it's all fine. See what happens when the right-wing media goes far enough down the rabbit hole. So far down the rabbit hole that even reality gets subverted. Pseudo-journalistic websites masquerading as news and people believing it. We don't have that in Britain because we have proper newspapers indulging in similar acrobatics. This is just a matter of fact, not opinion, not propaganda, not political positioning. It's a simple matter of fact that today the most powerful newspaper in the country is trying to sp sp spook you into thinking that Jeremy Corbyn is going to, I don't know, send the lefty bandwagon to Europe and fill it up with immigrants before driving it back himself, despite the fact that the same newspaper, the same journalist reported the same policy last year when it was a senior government advisor making precisely the same suggestion in completely and utterly different language, tone and intent. And, you know, sometimes I tell you this stuff and I think, I'm mad. Like, what, what, I mean, this is so blindingly obvious. How could anybody sit here and, and tell you otherwise? Surely anybody who calls themselves a journalist has a responsibility to tell consumers truth, to tell readers truth, to tell listeners truth. I came on the radio this morning and told you that this was an outrageous new development on the British political landscape, that this was a policy that they were desperate to keep under wraps because it was so controversial and potentially toxic. It's not even a policy. It's not even in the party manifesto, and it's not even a tiny bit different from what the government received as advice from their top immigration advisor last year. And I mention all of this not to start a conversation about the specifics of the latest attempt to treat you like credulous idiots. Rest assured that for three hours every day, there's at least one place in the British media that will treat you as whatever the opposite of credulous idiots is here. I, I want to I just use it as one example, perhaps, of why everything is so hard to pin down at the moment, because we've even allowed the simple concept of objective truth to be subverted. It, it, it is the same story being viewed through two completely different lenses. When it's the Labour Party doing it, it's, it's potentially apocalyptic in its awfulness. When it's the Conservative Party doing it, or their key advisors, it's just, you know, oh yeah, interesting, we'll have a look at that. And, and, and that's where we are now. If you, you just don't know where to turn to find out. In fact, you've got to do it yourself. And of course, most people can't be bothered. They don't have the time or the inclination or the energy to find out the truth for themselves. So they'll swallow whatever is on the front pages, whatever is being spouted at them by the usual megaphones. That's yeah, bizarre. Anyway, that's by the by. I don't want to talk about that particularly today. I just thought I owed it to you as a professional journalist to tell you the truth about one of the biggest stories doing the rounds politically today. I agree. Stop talking.